some more. Sing that chorus again, Jenny, or Jessica in the key of G. I know. I know. I know. tonight and that's been brother Ronnie got up talking about I know brother hub said I know and brother Omer got up here said I know I'm telling you what if there ever was a day I that know. you need to know it's a day and hour that we're living in turn to second Timothy chapter 1 I should be brief y'all have heard that before I shouldn't be long I, you said preacher I've heard that before but I'm telling you what, I'm glad for the power. I'm glad for the confirmation. I'm glad, Ronnie, for the truth. And I'm glad for the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you what the Word of God teaches. It's quoted so often. What would it profit a man if he had gained the whole world and lose his soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Brother Tony was talking about Waylon. This morning, man, I was standing here getting ready to pray for him, had my hand on him, and that child was weeping. How old is he? Seven, eight years old? Ten. Ten. All right, ten years old. He was standing here a sobbing, and Ronnie, the power of God was all over him. And I thought one of my preacher buddies that uh, used to be on the radio every afternoon, uh, I can't think of his name, on WMM, but I heard him tell a story so many times how that when they was kids, they played church. How many of you remembers? Now, I don't know if folks does it now. I've got a great nephew that mocks me. Uh, he, uh, old Gage, he told Shelly, my sister, she's, he said, Shelly, he said, he calls her sister Shelly. He said, sister Shelly, I've never in my life heard anybody pray as long as Richard prays. Said he prays, he prays for everything in the house. He goes on and on and Shelly said he can mock you, mock you to a T, Richard. I tell old Gage gets to play around with this thing. Oh, It'll yeah. get on him yeah. because I've heard my brother say so many times, he said when they was young children, they go to church on Sunday morning Afternoon, they'd gather up at their mama's house. After they ate dinner, said they'd go out in the front yard and said one would preach, one would sing, one would shout, one would cry, and one would go to the altar. He said, boys, one afternoon, said about eight or ten years old, Ronnie, he got to preaching. And he said on that afternoon, something came down that he had never experienced before. He was trying to remember what the preacher said, and he was trying to get all the preacher's emotions in order. But this afternoon, said something come over him, and he forgot about what the preacher said. But there was something inside of his mind feeding him every word. And when it come time for the invitation, said his sister come up to the yard there, uh, acting like she's a crying. He said, I looked, she wasn't acting like she was crying. She was crying, crocodile tears. And said she got down to that altar and instead of praying, Ronnie, a quiet prayer, she began to lift her hands toward heaven, thank God forever, and cried out to God to save her soul. I'm telling you what, you can't contain, you can't bind, you can't box up the power of God because it's real and it's powerful. Praise the Lord forever. I was telling a man, and I've told people for years, I've told them time and time again, I said one of the torments of hell is going to be, I believe with all of my heart, 
is the devil walking up to folks in hell. They won't be a person in hell that Ronnie, the Spirit of God has not wooed, that the Spirit of God has not spoken to. I'm telling you, God's no respecter person. I don't care if they're Chinese. I don't care if they're Portuguese. I don't care if they're Germans. I don't care if they're Americans. I'm telling you what, we're all God's creation, and the Spirit of God will speak to everybody in their own language, in their own understanding. But Ronnie, I believe with all of my heart, one of the torments of hell, listen to me. Uh, you heard Brother and Sister Chambers stand up. Listen, they may have been a lot of things. Uh, Sister Chambers does Kenneth forget a lot of stuff you tell him. He does, don't he? But you know what? And some of them he might forget on purpose, uh, like all of us do. But I'm telling you what, there's things that I'm sure he's forgotten. But you know what? I'm yet, I'm yet to see a child of God. I don't care if they're in their 80s. I don't care if they're in their 90s. I don't care if they're in their 70s. Ronnie, they can just about forget their name, but they'll not forget that time that they surrendered at an old-fashioned altar and found salvation sweet to their soul. But I believe one of the torments of hell will be the enemy, the devil, our adversary, will go through hell, Ronnie, all the corners of hell, and he'll go up to each individual one, and he'll look him in the eye, and nobody enjoys Ronnie to be made fun of. No, sirree. One of the worst things I think I've ever endured in my life, and I've had it happen to me a lot. I've been persecuted. That's hurt. I've been lied on. That hurt. I've been talked about. That hurt. But, Ronnie, the most hurtful thing is for somebody to belittle you and make fun of you for things that you can't help for the way that you look. But, Brother Phil, I believe with all of my heart the devil will go up and down the corners of hell. He'll walk up into people's faces and he'll begin to laugh at them with an evil laugh and he'll say look at me look at me I'm the very reason that you're here and you know I believe Jinky one of the things he'll do he'll take people down through the ages of time he said I want you to remind I want to remind you of something of a place where you was at the devil will say I remember because I was there you realize that the devil don't never miss a church service He's more faithful than some Christians. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Rhea. Listen, when it comes time to pray, the devil's never missed a prayer. Yes, sir. Rhea. He's there, Ronnie, trying to afflict, trying to draw your mind off. He never rests. He's always there. But I believe he'll go through the corners of hell and he'll look at people and he'll laugh that silly laugh. And he said, I want you to go back. What's today's date? This is all. August what, 6th, 7th? Eight. August 8th, 2001. If you're watching my live stream tonight, if you're in this building and you're unsaved and you leave here lost, the devil, listen, down to the uh, eternity from time to time, he'll walk up to you and he'll laugh in your face, Jinky, and he said, you remember August the 8th, Sunday evening, uh, uh, 2021, all that wonderful service you was having at that little church at Rumble up on the hill, I remember, and I I know you remember, you remember the Lord speaking to you and saying you need to surrender to God. And all of a sudden you heard a voice that said, don't do it now, put it off. Listen to me, Brother Jinky, he'll laugh. He said, I lied to you, I deceived you, and you fell for it. Man, I'm glad tonight, Ronnie, that I know my sin you're under the blood. Thank God for every Paul wrote there in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. I want you to look over there. He said, listen, he said, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Paul said, for I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, look at it there, that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. What if there ever was a day we need to know? It's a day and hour that we're living in. Amen. 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 
know. Sing it, Jessica. You say, preacher, you didn't know the definition of no. I've known it all my life. But Webster really defined it well. Webster said no means to be well informed. No means to be aware of. No means to be acquainted with or very familiar. And Webster said that no means to understand. Ronnie, there's a lot of things I do not know, and there's a lot of things I don't know about the Word of God, but I know that I passed from death unto life. Yeah. The Scripture said, how do you know that you passed from death unto life? Because you love your brother. And the Word of God also says, if you can't love man who you have seen, how in the world can you love God whom you haven't seen? Now, real quick, like, let me give you two or three little points. And I wanted to come back and get a song. Jessica, you get a song together, whether you want them girls to sing or y'all to sing or you sing that song, that's all that matters. Listen to me, Ronnie. I ain't going there to get rich. I ain't going there to listen because I finally get to live in a mansion. But I'm telling you what, I want to get there and join into that song. I've redeemed my love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All oh, to him I now return, for I've been redeemed. Amen. Any night of the week, any given night, most of the time, if you spend some time after dark out in your yard, listen to me. You'll hear a dog, a dog begin to bark, maybe in the distance, or maybe it's your own dog. Begin to bark. Listen to me. You can stand there and listen, whether it's my dog or Omer's dog or a dog up a holler from us or a dog down on the main drag, Main Street Ashford. You can hear a dog bark, Marty, and I know you've experienced this. In a little bit, you'll hear another chime in, and in a little bit, you'll hear another chime in, and in a little bit, you'll hear another chime in, till every dog in the community's barking. Yeah. But you know what? Only one dog yeah, in the whole community knows why they're all barking. <laughs> oh, listen to me tonight. Listen, we can all shout. We can all praise God, Ronnie. Listen, I don't praise God because you're saved. I'm thankful that you're saved, but I'm shout because I know that I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven and I'm no longer in the chapter, 19th chapter of Acts, we find a story, that, two or three stories. In the 19th, as, I, as the Lord laid this scripture, this message on my heart, I began to think about it. And I've been reading the 19th chapter of Acts for some time, been studying, I don't know, several days, maybe a week or longer. I've been studying, doing some research on the 19th chapter of Acts. But you'll find there, the Bible said that, uh, that uh, uh, Paul was doing miracles to the, uh, to the power that God had laid on him. Paul had been doing a lot of preaching. Paul had seen a lot of good work. But you remember one familiar story, Ronnie, there in the 19th chapter. The Bible said that Paul, listen, he was doing all of these, these marvelous works. They were some of the church there. They, they, they want a hold of that thing. Listen to me, Ronnie. We can't serve the Lord on somebody else's experience. Right. But you remember Sceva having seven sons. The Bible said right. that his sons come out there. Man, that was magnificent. See, these folks that Paul had been preaching to, Ronnie, was used to what you taught on this morning. They was used to soothsaying. They was used to uh, being around exorcists. And they was being around fortune tellers. But Paul, he come and he's in the power of God. And Paul then works that these folks, just like that, that, that when Nebuchadnezzar, Ronnie, had called those guys in. 
all of these wise men of his kingdom, none of them could give him the dream, nor is the interpretation of the dream. And, and, and that's the same way Paul. Paul was basically in the same mess here. Yeah. And these folks said, man, we've seen all kinds of magicians. We've seen all kinds of exorcism performed. And we've seen all of these magical tricks. Study it for yourself. They said, we ain't never seen nobody do nothing like Paul's done. So anyway, Stephen's seven sons jumped out and they ran into a man that was possessed with the devil. And the Bible said that uh, Stephen's son said, listen, we adjure you in, uh, in the name of Jesus who Paul preached, come out. And the Bible said that the, the demonic spirit answered and said, Paul I know, and Jesus I know, but who in the world are you guys? You're getting ready to get to whoop of your life. And the Bible said that that evil spirit jumped on them, yeah. and they fled the house naked and beat. Right. Amen. Now listen, that's a familiar story there that comes out of Acts 19. But you remember, Ronnie, that there was a man by the name of Demetrius. He was a silversmith. And Paul began to preach. See, they had this goddess here by the name of Diana. And the Bible said that she was in the temple. And, 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 and that Demetrius and, and several of the, the iron workers that we would call them today, they call them in that day silversmiths, they, would, they made little toys or, or made little replicas. And they would sell them. Man, they done good. Listen to me. Uh, uh, right, uh, Brother Andy was pre uh, teaching a message here a couple weeks ago, and I thought about it so much. Uh, man, the God that we serve can't be held in your hands. Uh, but there's a lot of people sold a lot of gods uh, that men could touch, uh, and men could listen to me. I can touch him, but he can't touch. Yeah. I'm talking physically. Yeah. He can touch me, and I touched him. Through the Spirit, right? right. Amen. But Demetrius and these other silversmiths, they'd make these little metal dolls, these little replicas. And man, people's buying them up. And Ronnie, that'd be the same way today. And there's folks does it all the time. I, 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 and I'm not throwing stones, but listen to me. And I'm not a bit jealous, but I'm here to tell you, if God told me to build uh, some big building here in Rumble, West Virginia. You know, I've been here going on 24 years. I've got my first time to beg. Right, church? Amen. I don't beg. I don't ask for money. Listen to me. When we got a need, God supplies our needs. So I don't have to spend the majority of the service begging and pounding. But I do know one thing. God will supply our needs according to his riches and glory. But Demetrius and all these silversmiths, they made, it, they made these little gods. And, and they would sell them to people. Man, it was doing good. Yes, sir. And, and some of these preachers get on TV. Man, they'll sell you bottles of water for big dollars. Water's water. Listen to me. God blessed the, uh, the Jordan River just like he did the Cole River. I feel the same spirit in the Cole River as as John did in the Jordan River. Amen. It's all his. It comes from the same place. So why in the world would we have to order it from somewhere else? Because it comes from, listen, it falls from the sky. It falls from the heaven. That's right. These guys got shook up. Man, Paul was seeing people saved, people seeing people converted. Most importantly, that he was seeing people change. Right. Demetrius got his his guys together there in, in the town. He said, listen, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. He said, if we don't do something about Paul, he said, if we don't put a stop to this, listen to me, things is going to get tough. We're going to have to close up doors in our stores and in our shops. But listen to me, Paul kept right on preaching. And, 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 and the Bible said there, listen, uh, in verse 32 of 19, you can read it later. The Bible said the same thing. Listen, there was a, 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 a same way today. If you would go, you see on TV all these riots and all of these gang fights and all of this. You know what they proved? Ronnie, the majority of them 
don't even know why they're fighting. Come on. There's folks, listen to me, going to church and don't even know why they're going to church. Because nobody has ever taught them that you can know, that you know, that you know that your sins are under the blood. But in verse 32 of 19, the Bible said that, that the whole place was in an uproar. And, and, and Luke, Luke the writer of Acts, Luke said some didn't even know for what cause they were rioting, what cause they were fighting. Yeah. Because everybody else was fighting. They joined in. They jumped right in. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Ronnie, I've seen people shout. I've seen people rejoice. I've seen people hoop and holler in the church. Right. <laughs> Excuse me, Anna, done something for me. It touched my heart. Right. But you know what? I had to know for myself. I had to know for myself. Right. Listen, the Word of God teaches us in John, just about all the Gospels, Jesus said, my sheep, what? Know my voice. Know my voice. And a stranger they won't follow. Listen to me all through the Word of God. The psalmist recorded, Isaiah recorded, all of the prophets. Listen to me. Do you remember in John chapter 4 how that there was Samaritan woman when Jesus began to talk to her? She said, now, sir, I know that the Messiah is coming. She had already, Ronnie, learned that much. She said, I know that the Messiah is coming. I'm telling you, we're witness to people today, and they'll say, I know God's real. I know without a shadow of a doubt. But Ronnie, listen to me. And they'll say, I know I need to be saved. But what do they do? They'll put it off to another day. Jesus, this Samaritan woman looked at Jesus, and she said, I know when Jesus began to talk about his coming and all of that and preached to her there a little bit. She said, I know the Messiah's coming. Jesus looked at her, said, lady, this is your lucky day. Thank God he's here, for I am he. You remember the Bible teaches us in 9, chapter 9 of John, the word of God said that there was a boy that Jesus had met, and he was blind from his birth. And the word of God said that Jesus made a spittle out of clay. Y'all get ready to sing. And the Bible said that, that he made a spittle out of his clay, out of clay, and he anointed his eyes, and he told him to go wash in the pool of Salaam. And the word of God said that he went, and he came back seeing. And everybody began to question him. Everybody began to ask questions. And they said, what in the world happened? Who done this? Said, and his neighbors, his friends, said, we, I, I'll tell you, we're pretty sure it's the same one. Same boy we've known all his life. He's been blind, but we ain't for sure. Listen, and they was confused because of unbelief. You remember that they come and question his parents, said he's our son, but the Bible said for fear of being put out of the synagogue, listen, they wouldn't give God the glory. And they nailed that blind boy down again, and they said, now, he said, I can't really tell you a whole lot. He said, this I know, I once was blind, but now I see, praise the Lord. And listen to me, we can know, Ronnie, without a shadow of a doubt, we might not know, as Tony said, what tomorrow holds, but we can know who holds tomorrow. Yeah. We might not know, listen, sometimes uh, what we may even forget our name, and it seems like that Alzheimer's is raging mightily. I'm telling you what, Alzheimer's may come in, Ronnie, and take our mind to where we won't even know our name, but I still believe we'll know that our sin is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God and never to be remembered against us no more. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we're so thankful for the service that you've given us. So thankful, Lord, for the confirmation that you've given us. Glad that we know. And God, we gotta know. There's a lot of things we may not understand in this life, 
There's a lot of things we might not comprehend, but one thing we can know, that we've been washed in the blood, that we've been to Calvary, that we've been changed, that we've been set free, that we've been pardoned, that we've been forgiven, that we've been redeemed, and that we're on our way to heaven. Father, I pray that you would help folks under the sound of my voice, whether in this building tonight, whether they're viewing my live stream. God, if they don't know, that they know, that they know, if they don't have the assurance in knowing that their sins is under the blood, God, I pray that you would give them courage right now to slip out of the seat, Father, or whether they get down to where they're seated now, Lord, or whether they cry out in their home and said, Lord, I want to know that I've been forgiven. I want to know that I, the bonds of chains of sin has been broken and I'm delivered and set free. I want to know that my name, as Sister Jessica was talking about, one of the little girls said tonight, God's got a big book and we can know that our name is there. Glory be to the God forever. I pray, for, Father, that you wouldn't allow anyone. We're not going to beat on nobody. We're not going to embarrass nobody. But, but Father, we're going to stress the point that you got to know and that you can know. And you'll let us know that we've been set free and we've been forgiven and we're saved. Give folks courage. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name once stood with sinners lost and bore a painful record. But when by I his get saved, you salvation buy cross and placed it on his robe. While others climbed through worldly strife to come. in this building tonight that was, that was worthy of salvation but it was because God loved us that he gave his son you say brother Richard I don't want to spend eternity with the devil making fun of me I know the Lord spoke to my heart tonight and I know that I want to serve him and I've put it off too long Brother Richard, while every head's bowed and every eye's closed, would you lead me in the sinner's prayer? I sure will. You've got to pray. You can repeat my prayer, you can pray your own prayer, but you've got to pray. And it's got to come from the heart. Pray like this. Say, Lord, I don't know where to start. I'm like everybody else. I've done a lot of wrong in my lifetime. Some I remember and some I don't. 
I've got a dirty slate. Pages full of my sin. But I believe that, God, you can wash them away if I ask you. And I know I've got to ask. So, Lord, right now, I'm asking you to wipe my slate clean. I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking for mercy. Lord, I want to be saved. I want to leave this place tonight knowing that my name is in that book. I want to go to a place where I'm not lo where I'm loved and where I'm not made fun of. Where I'll have peace and not torment. Where I'll have comfort and not pain. So Lord, I ask you to save me. Forgive me my sins. I accept salvation. I accept forgiveness. And through faith in you, I now say that I have been saved. I have been forgiven. I have been set free. I'm saved and on my way to heaven. And I know my name is being written in your book. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every head still bowed and every eyes closed. You prayed that prayer tonight. You know without a shadow of a doubt that God forgive you. Now listen to me. The devil try to make you doubt. If you prayed that prayer and you confessed him, the word of God said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Slip your hand up good and high and say, Preacher, the Lord save me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. More needs to be saved. More needs to be saved. God bless you.